the theme of sustainability and environment conservation is something which has uh, really consumed me ever since I was a teenager. This definition may not be a buzzword today, but uh, back in 1987, 1988, this was really a buzzword. And it influenced me a lot. During the period of 1988 and 1990, I was almost consuming every piece of environmental literature, the Brundtland Report, Montreal Protocol, and everything. And all of them shaped my life, and I made it a point uh, that I'll make my life in environment conservation. Uh, for some reason, cities became the pivot of all my work, and that's what I'm going to be speaking about. And the whole idea about how we can make sustainable cities, how we can reduce their impact on uh, the ecology, on the planet, and at the same time, uh, how, how they can give great quality of life to everybody who's staying in them, has really been uh, the center of a lot of my work. And a lot of time when we talk about sustainability or preserving the planet, it's uh, very scary to people. It almost seems that our lifestyles and saving the planet is incompatible. And in a lot of ways, possibly it is. But what I'm going to touch in my presentation is that there's so many things which we can do, which can make our cities more sustainable. And in the process, we can make uh, a great quality of life for all of us. So in 1991, I was 16 years old. And I remember dragging my father to the Worldwide Fund office at Fort in Mumbai to become a student member of uh, WWF. And uh, right early on, I got exposed to this very powerful phrase, think globally, act locally. And it shaped my life completely. Till that time, I was growing up on David Attenborough, Jacques Gusto, National Geographic Magazine, Bitu Segal, Sanctuary. All the headline grabbing big environmental campaigns, save Amazon forests, save the elephants, tigers, everything. But suddenly this phrase made a lot of sense. If you really got to make a difference to the tigers, to the forest, and a lot of things, a lot of work has to begin with what happens in our immediate community and our area of influence. And so it's been think global, act local for me ever since. And I'll be sharing some of my work, and I hope it inspires you and uh, motivates you to do your bit for the community and for the cities you live in. So this is where I began my activism from, from saving this lake. This is a lake in Lokanwala complex on Theri West. Eight acres of solitude, 50 birds as residents. I've been going there since 1994. But in 1999, uh, the local municipal corporation office issued orders to a contractor to fill it up with garbage and debris. Most probably illegal hutment settlements were to come up. I noticed it just in the nick of time. And over a two month campaign, which involved me doing just about everything. I was a 24-year-old that time, preparing for my management exams. My mother thought I'd be migrating to America soon, but little did she know what's coming. So over a two-month two campaign, I stood in front of trucks, heckled with people, slanging, made impromptu placards, visited municipal offices, just about everything. That was my first taste of uh, governance and interacting with the government. But we managed to save this lake, and it is still there today. And I really invite you guys to come there for a visit. So. From there, it went just from strength to strength. And uh, this is the lake, again, another view. And uh, in 2001, what you see over there is the lake and the mangroves next to it. A 50-acre plot of mangroves came under danger from one of the local developers. Again, I happened to notice it in time. And uh, thanks to Mr. Vinay Mohan Lal, who was the Secretary of Environment that time, I think within a matter of a week, we were able to stop all the debris dumping. And that uh, beautiful patch of mangroves still exists. And uh, that was the first time that uh, I got quoted in the Times of India. And uh, that was a big high that time. I was 26 years old. And uh, things went from strength to strength. And I ended up saving almost 300 acres of mangroves uh, in the immediate vicinity. So these are the mangroves, some of them that you see and some that you don't see. And mind you, this was not the era of social media. You couldn't tag people on Facebook, etc. Cell phones were not that much email very little, you were operating on fax and actually going to people and calling up on landline. So it was a very difficult uh, time and uh, also the mangroves were under a big threat that time from uh, the developers. But uh, we managed to save almost uh, 300 acres locally. What you see in this picture, this flattened ground is both a tragedy and a success. Between 98 and 2001, uh, almost 2002, uh, one of the other developers <coughs> flattened 500 acres of mangrove forest illegally to build uh, a proposed golf course and a township. Again, in June, two, June 2001, I noticed it brought to the notice of the city. And over a period of one year, with uh, the active collaboration and so much of hard work and difficulty, Praveen Chaudhary, Kusha Kiran, Sanjoy Monga, and the wonderful residents of Milat Nagar, we managed to have that permission revoked. So this plot of land remains like that. 
We don't know what's going to happen with it, but at least they couldn't make a golf course over there. A uh, lot of people hate me for that, but uh, that's a separate story and we won't get into that. So, including my friends who play golf. So, <laughs> and uh, now I'd like to speak to you about another uh, part of my life, which is working with solid waste management. What you see over here is a big, huge uh, garbage dump, historical picture of Gorai dumping ground. And this is really the flip side of my work on saving mangroves, because historically speaking, if you look at uh, Dharavi, <coughs> Chinchori, Gorai, and right now Mulund, Kanjur, and Devnar, all are garbage dumps are situated on uh, beautiful mangrove patches. You can see the rim of mangroves around this garbage dump. And this is not just a case of Mumbai, this is the case of all over India. We just don't seem to manage waste, we're just picking it up and dumping. All over India, 1.5 lakh tons of waste is generated every day. We're not going to have enough space, enough dumping ground space ever. So it's time we stopped dumping waste and started uh, managing it. This is the pamphlet which I first uh, laid my hands on in 1994. This was developed by Shanta Ramshanai, the late Shanta Ramshanai. He was a big influence on my life. He was one of the most knowledgeable people I knew on sustainability, toxicity, and waste management. And uh, since then, uh, segregation of waste at source has been really a message which I've been taking across the city and the country. Just a simple habit of keeping two dustbins or three or four dustbins, whatever your motivation is, and segregating waste at source, not mixing it, can just cause so much of difference to the planet, to the environment, and yet we don't do it. This is a project which I did last year for a city called Ambala in Haryana. Within a space of one month, we could transform the whole waste collection process from mixed to segregated. This is a building in Lord Parel, uh, Marathon Era, Jayan Broker, fastidiously works uh, with 225 families. Not a single kilogram of waste goes to the dumping grounds. They convert all of their waste using this tumbler into sweet smelling compost. Every building can do it. There's absolutely no excuse why any organic wet food waste should go to a dumping ground. And all that is dry can go for recycling. Suddenly you will have no need for dumping grounds at all. This is a project which I'm working at Mumbai Sustainability Center. This is my colleague uh, Namita who's been visualizing this. We're trying to, on a map of Mumbai, plot every building which is doing composting. Instead of a boring spreadsheet, suddenly you have a very act, uh, attractive visualization. I hope uh, your buildings are going to be featuring here very soon. So now I'll speak about uh, liquid waste management that was solid. Uh, sewage. We're dumping almost 1,000 liters of untreated sewage into Mumbai seas every day. It is one of the most polluted in the world. And yet, solutions exist. What you see on the right-hand side is dirty smelling sewage. Everything which comes from your toilet, bathroom, kitchens. And that same sewage has been converted into drinking water using absolutely eco-friendly techniques. Just imagine if every building in Mumbai, instead of giving out dark black sewage, was giving out such clear water, suddenly the sea would be sparkling. And it's all possible. It's not. Uh, this is uh, Professor Nadim Khalil on the left. He's showing me three months back the constructed wetland. My friend Hamed and Aligarh invited me. One million liters of Aligarh Muslim University's sewage is treated using this. And those beakers I showed you from here. So technologies exist, this is not the only process. Now I would like to touch another topic which is very close to my heart, which is making our cities walking friendly. It really pains me and angers me the way we treat pedestrians on Indian streets and roads. It almost seems that we are far more in love with the automobile than the country where it was invented. And it's, it's painful to see what the pedestrians have to go through. This is an industrial area in Andheri East and we just don't seem to be caring enough and uh, forget sustainability, forget the planet, but these are basic things. And uh, the whole idea, and that is why I started something called as Walking Project in uh, the year 2012, and we've been trying to work ever since to work with municipal corporations, and everything exists. The designs are there, the urban designers, architects, everything is there. But this is a photograph from Veer Naraman Road in South Mumbai, and uh, it's a pleasure walking on this road. And I think it is high time that we started focusing on making our cities walking friendly for public health, for the planet. Imagine millions of trips, which are one kilometer or two kilometer in nature, would suddenly shift to walking if walking was a lot more pleasurable. So that's, that's my message again, that let's work together in a community and work on uh, improving walkability. In the end, I would just like to leave you with this pleasant picture. And uh, this is a park which I visited 10 days back in uh, New Delhi. It's a new opened uh, park, Sundar Nursery. And I would really invite all of you to visit this. Uh, 
I think it's high time that we all started having an attitude of positivity towards Indian cities. I work with a lot of people and there is a general sense of cynicism and negativity that you just cannot do anything. But I feel a lot can be done. And I think we can make experience of living in our cities a pleasant one and not a jarring one. And we owe it to ourselves because in the next decade or so, uh, maybe two decades, 50% of India will be living in cities. And uh, we've not done a good job in the past 10 to, two, uh, 10 to 20 years. But uh, it's never too late. If we just change our attitude, possibly we might have some of the best cities uh, to live in in the world still. So that's it. Thank you very much.